I'm good. It's a bit of deja vu. It's the second time we've done this this week. Aren't you lucky? I've, I've got a week stood down this week, so I've actually got time. We have any more coasters still up there? Josh, you want to do me a favor? 
You've got stream music running. Yep. Oh, yeah. No worries, guys. Nice chatting to you. Yeah, yeah. Look, I suppose just something that happened naturally and organically. My uh, my dad was a big football fan. Um, he didn't play the game at any high level or anything like that. But just if you grew up, if you grew up uh, in Europe, it's it's the working man's game, I suppose, and it's what everyone watches, what everyone plays. And uh, we're right, the estate I grew up on. There was hundreds of houses, and um, yeah, it was literally games. Football, football, football. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, got into it, playing my mates and, you know, I want to be the better, want, want, want to get better, want to be the best at it. And, yeah, it's been a, a lifelong obsession since I'm seven or eight years old. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we go any further, obviously, can everyone hear me? Everyone's, everyone's saying they can't hear me, they got audio dramas. Can you see me now? It was a, it was a struggle. It was a struggle trying to get get um get Roy into Discord. <laughs> the audio, the audio is just having a bit of dramas as well. Let us know now. I can hear you. Beautiful. There we go. Continue. That's on. because I went in and fixed it. Yeah, that's that's why, we're, <laughs> that's why we've got our IT twenty four seven IT guru. Happy days. <laughs> that's that charged by the hour. That's it, mate. Maybe you should maybe you should be a major sponsor. Uh, <laughs> um. So yeah. So you spent your time through Cork. Uh, 2005, he's won the league? Yeah, yeah. Um, I started my career at, at Coventry as a, a youth player. And mm -hmm. I got a bit homesick, came home when I was about 18, back back to Cork. Um, luckily at the time, it was a really good team, a really strong league. So it was professional. I mean, um, you know, we did, as I said, a very experienced team. So I was a young lad coming to that team uh, as a midfielder, as a winger. Um, but yeah, launched my career it was the best thing for my career to, to play at home and in front of my own, you know, people. I never forgot where where I came from, and I enjoyed that. And yeah, we won the league in in '05, a couple of cup finals in '06 and '07 as well. And yeah, got got the opportunity to play in European competition every year. So we UEFA Champions League qualifiers in '06 and the UEFA Cup in '05 and '07. So yep. so we had, we had some really good, you know games and, and wins against top class European sides as well and um it was yeah, a great time, a great group of people I played with and um yeah, it was one of the fondest memories of my career, definitely. Yeah, a few um a few decent plays in there as well for the the fans. Yeah, yeah, we, we in, plenty of good plenty you know. of good players uh, uh, of players as you would know would be obviously Shane Long and, and yeah. Kevin Doyle uh, being strikers in that team but we a few other guys went on to get international caps as well, and um, not just myself, but you, Alan Bennett, who was a defender, who went on to play for Southampton and Reading, um, and Joe Gamble, who went on to play in the UK at a, at a lower level, but had a good career overall, but got a couple of caps for Ireland as well. So, yeah, there was a few others that probably could have went down a bit further as well, but we were, we were very fortunate. And yeah. the league that time, the likes of Wes Houlihan, who obviously was a Jet as well, played for Shelburne, who were very strong. Yep. They were looking down to qualify. The, I think Deportivo scored a goal in the 90th minute in 2005. For if they if they if they got a draw, I think they would have qualified for the Champions League that year. And Derry City were very strong as well. So we I played in a really golden age for the League of Ireland. Yeah, and not, and obviously not a number nine either. You were you you were pretty, yeah no not, pretty not super the very, quick back then. Yeah, <laughs> not till the very end. My last season, I suppose I I came in because I was quick and uh, I worked hard. I, I kind of slotted in on the right hand side of midfield um, and created a lot of goals and, uh, and I enjoyed I enjoyed playing there and I played a lot of my career in England there as well yeah um, but um, yeah just I suppose my last season I got pushed up front we had a few injuries and uh, a few personnel changes and yeah I scored loads of goals and that's how I kind of got my move to um, to Sunderland I had a few few other options as well I went to Sun I chose Sunderland at the time I I could have went to Fulham. There was a few other options, uh, I think Hull and uh, Celtic for a while. So, 
Uh, I went to Sunderland uh, and uh, under Roy Keane, and that was a it was a great experience as well. Yeah, well, that's where we move now over to England. Um, Sunderland, Roy Keane was at the helm at the time, uh, so obviously you know a bit a bit of Irish flair going through going through the squad at Sunderland at the time. Um, how how did it come about? What what sold you? I know I know you're a Mank fan. Yeah, um, won't hold that against you, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. What saw me? I, yeah, I suppose. I mean, obviously, yeah. He was probably one of, if not the one of the top three all time greatest Irish players. Probably along with uh, Liam Brady and John Giles. Um, but um, yeah, look, he, he spoke. He spoke to me like a, you know on a very down to earth level. You you come here, you work hard. I'll give you a chance. I look after you, and he was true to his word. But um, yeah, to, to learn from somebody of that ilk, that quality, um, and as you said, the, the squad was peppered with either, you know, Irish influence at the time, current or former internationals, or former Manchester United players, which was his connection. So um, yeah, I learned a hell of a lot from some absolute, you know, A-list stars, and to get to play against some of them as well in the Premier League and test myself was a, a terrific challenge. And yeah, Roy was Roy was great, a very intense guy, which is why he got to the very top of the game. Yeah. But uh but great. No, he used to join in, in, in training sometimes and you know, just the way to pass and, and, and the, the sheer quality of the guy, the, the way he just went about his business as a yeah. football player, you could see why he was why he was at the very top of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um so at, during your time there you got you moved around a little bit, a few loan deals. And mm-hmm. so forth. Um, were they? You know, how, did he help you in regards to that? Like, you know, let's let's you know, let's look at a couple of options, get you out, maybe play a lot more football, and then sort of come back and hopefully revamp. Or was it virtually? Look, mate, there's a couple of deals there. Take one, and hopefully, come yeah. Back. No, know, I, no, was he more supportive been... than you know, just sort yeah. of push aside? No, he was very, he was very supportive. I think he was fairly happy with my first season there. I mean. Um, I played, I think, 19 games overall in my first season. Probably, I only played as a striker. Uh, I probably started one game as a striker out of that. So, first couple of games I came on, I played right back. Uh, then the rest of them I played as a right winger yeah. most of the time. Um, and a lot, most of them were substitute appearances. The second season I came back, I came back in good shape. I was excited about the season ahead. We went on a tour. I scored against Sporting Lisbon. I scored in a couple of goals on our Irish tour. And I was really hoping to get a, a run in the team that year, uh, and as a striker, ideally. But um, they spent a lot of money that year. He, he, I think he brought in uh, Cease, uh, yeah, Gibral Cease and El Hajj Juf and a, a few, you know, and we we had a few other strikers there as well. So it kind of forced me down the pecking order. So he called me in, and he said, "You got a couple of options to go on loan. I think it'd be good for you to play some games, score some goals, and." He said, you've got an option of uh, Leeds, Nottingham Forest, or Dundee United in, in Scotland. And Dundee United at the time, um, their coach had been on the phone all all off-season. And he said, look, I think he's going to play every game. He's really keen to get you up there. And he said, go up there, score a load of goals, and come back to me, stronger, fitter, ready for action. You know, he said, uh, it, was all, it was all done the positive way. Unfortunately, when I went on loan, by the time I came back from that loan, he'd, he'd lost his job, so it was never really the same for me there, you know. So that was yeah. unfortunate. Do I regret maybe not just, you know, digging my heels and then staying, working under him for another six to nine months that he was there? You know, that that's probably something in my head. Why, why is there more advanced years I would have done? But, yeah. you know, I was just desperate to play and, and prove myself, really. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're not going to go into the list of teams in, in, in depth we'd be in yeah. hours you've been around yeah. um so obviously in the chat there's a few in there uh spend a bit of time at hartlepool coventry obviously hibs um over there in 2012 14 games um yeah. northampton dp double m fc yeah dpmm that's um brunei that's brunei, a southern yeah, brunei's team yeah yeah so 24 games 15 goals thereabouts according to wikipedia we can't yeah, no, I scored 26 goals there. Yes, um, there <laughs> so I scored 26 goals. I, was a, I, I wasn't really looking into leaving England. I had a few injuries the previous year. Yep. Uh, I had an opportunity to go there as the marquee player. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I took it. It was a chance for me to get fit and get sharp and go back to England. But I never went back to England. As soon as I went away, I just opened my eyes to 
the opportunities away from English football and managers getting sacked and just a constant revolving door. And yeah. as you said there, I had five or six loan moves in, in five years. And, you know, it was, it was frustrating. Every time a manager got the sack, I felt like it changed things. So, yeah, yeah I went to Brunei. Uh, as as I said, one of the foreign players there had a good year, and it, yeah, it opened my eyes. Really, I always had a, you know, in the back of my mind wanting to play abroad, yep. uh, America or Australia, and um, yeah, w- while I was in in, in Brunei, um, I had an agent called David O'Keefe contact me to say would I be interested in coming to play in Australia, and two of the clubs that came up were Central Coast and uh, Newcastle, um, but at the time I think Newcastle were going through. Bit of turmoil, yeah. which is it's a bit of a shock. That's not, yeah, that's that's not really right. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Phil Stubbins might have been the coach, and a few a few yeah. of the senior players were getting turfed out. Apparently, yeah. they were no no good uh, anymore, and they were getting turfed out. So um, Mariners became an option, but the season in Brunei finished in October. Mariners new season wouldn't start prior the following year, so that that's. That's where the conversation started, but um, yeah, yeah, it was in the back. It was in the back of my mind, but it, ultimately, it opened it opened the doors to come to Australia and play in the A League, and you know, something that I'm very fortunate I had the opportunity to do because it's been a, a really enjoyable kind of second part of my career, or third part, whatever you look at it, depending on how long you think I've been That's in the game. Part. Yeah, well, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely, I suppose, with regards life football balance, I suppose in the UK. You know, uh, oh, don't get me wrong. I lived in some lovely places and yeah, yeah, yeah. great contracts yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But in Australia, you're talking about the, the balance of yeah. family life and football. Uh, it, it just suited me perfect. And uh, yeah, look, I'm still here now, so I don't need to sell it to you. I don't need to sell no, it to you. It, I was it, about to say you, you trade the beaches of Blackpool for the beaches there of Newcastle. There, there, there you go. You know, so that that's 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 pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And. You know, I've been fortunate as well, touch wood. I am, um, you know, since I've come here, I haven't had too many injuries. I, yeah. My first season at Newcastle, probably, I, I missed a lot of games with a groin problem. But other than that, I, I've been pretty fortunate. So, a game every week probably suits my body type. And yeah. maybe I've just been a bit lucky as well. It's not been so many high-impact injuries. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely more weeks on the sideline due to suspension than um. Oh, yeah, there's injuries. been a few of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, there's been a few of them. We were lucky enough to see it live in the flesh. Yeah, it was Did you, go to, you, you were at the grand final, were you? Oh, oh yeah, we were. Yeah, course, yeah, yeah. It's, one, it's one of those. Jeez, if, you, if you tried to do it, you couldn't do it. You know, It just yeah. shows you the athleticism of me. There you go. Yeah. It was fantastic. I sat on a flight from Melbourne to Sydney, yeah. and I was the only Jet supporter on the plane. Crowd oh, yeah. nothing but Melbourne I victory know. supporters. And it, the, thing, the thing is as well, I mean, the, the ground that night, it was electric. I mean, yeah, it was. Just the hairs in the back of your neck stand up thinking about it. And we actually played really well. We actually played really well in the game. Um, obviously, the goal was ten yards offside. We yeah. we didn't know that at the time because there was no VAR and and, and yeah, you just think, ten seconds. You just, anyway. Yeah, you, you you just but you just as a player you're just thinking yeah. if it's offside it's going to get a judged it's offside. So when it was given a goal, okay, you're frustrated because it was their first and only shot on goal the yeah. whole night. But then after that, uh, that they kind of just. We done went full Italian and put everything behind the ball. But I thought we mm. passed the ball well. We played some good stuff. We just the ball just wouldn't go over the line for us, you know. So uh, it was a frustrating one. I think we we left the grand final winners medal behind there. But it's it's one of, it's one of those. It was a yeah. it was a great season overall. Arnie coming in, signing some experienced quality players. Um, there's no rocket science, but we we had a successful season because of that. It all just clicked together, and the fans yeah. got on board, and it was. Um, it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable time to be a Jet. Yeah, it's amazing when you start winning games. All the all the Jets fans just rock up. It's amazing. But unfortunately, when you lose, it's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's there's sad, a, there's you know. A, there's, a, there's a bit of that. I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily agree with just that opinion. I. I, yeah. I would imagine a lot of it has to do with the ups and downs of ownership. The ups and downs mm-hmm. of what they're getting for their money when they're coming in the ground. Yeah. What they what they're losing every year. They're losing players that they they enjoy watching. Every every time they get they kind of buy into a player or yeah. a team or a coach or an owner, they're gone. Yeah. And then yeah. it's a oh this is a restart, this is Newcastle, this is two point oh, but it's been two point oh about four or five different times, which I so I, I, I get it. 
you're going to get sunshine supporters anywhere. That that happens, but like yeah. not the volume that it happens at Jets. Unfortunately, I just think there's a little bit of people are kind of there's a kind of a, an overwhelming sigh when a manager yeah. goes or oh new ownership or yep. players are gone. It's kind of a recurring theme. So. I think it's more frustration than just losing yes. games, really. Oh, it is. And, and Josh and I are both guilty for it as well. New owners. Oh, here we go. You know. You know. Long. We're, oh, we're getting rid of all our senior players. Oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've seen it before. That's, and I think that's it. But me and Josh yeah. will stick by. We always yeah. have. Yeah. 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 And that's the important part. Well, that's the part of being a fan. The tragic part of being a supporter, I should say, because a fan is a fanatic that, as you said, throws the toys out of the, out of the pram when... Yep. Things aren't going their way, and, and they don't stick with it. But a supporter supports the cause, supports the badge, and yep. that's the important part. I think it's important you support your club through it all because every business goes through ups and downs. And look, I genuinely hope that this is this is the Newcastle two point zero. That <laughs> in two years' time, they're not what we got wrong. We won't do it again. You know what I mean? I, yep. I want yep. this to be not just it's a gold jersey, and we're trying to get people back on site. It's actually something worthwhile, yeah. Yeah. not just off and smoke and mirrors that's the reality yep. you know no well, the, the club came out and stated they're they're looking for an what is it was it been an australian striker just to <laughs> i just did in. say he was looking at for an australian striker an australian cheap striker to come in and fill the spot obviously maybe there you go. maybe yeah, might, maybe a little stuff up on their behalf now you're an australian citizen here we go <laughs> i don't know I, I don't know i right. think i think he, maybe he wants to do things yeah. his own way i think um unfortunately i don't know my my birth cert goes against me because uh, yeah. look, playing for Newcastle meant a lot to me. I gave my 100% every time I stepped out and on the pitch for Newcastle. So, yeah, so that, as I said, as much as it fills me with frustration, uh, it is what it is, and, and he, he's it. probably gone his own route. That's exactly right. I, I, did, I, I did read somewhere in the paper today, apparently we're getting bought out by Saudi owners. Did I hear that right, Ben? Newcastle United getting bought out by Saudi <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we wish. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I seen the black and the black and white, and I thought maybe there was just a mistake. Wrong. wrong <laughs> <way to go. laughs> um, well, as I said, we'll talk about the A League. There's, there's definitely something I've wanted to ask you because Ben and I talk. You know, we talk football a lot, a lot differently to others um, who just, you know, they watch the game, they love it, they just want to see goals and everything else. For for us, we're very analytical in the way that we watch a game. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, to to Not so stats. much about the goal. It's about the five passes beforehand that got the goal. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's talk sort of to, talk to me then. What? That's that's. But not not so yeah, much. Not, not, not so much about your game or anything like that. I'm talking leagues. So you know, you, you spent your time in Ireland. You've spent your time in the A League. Yeah. Um, from memory, the Irish league started in the late '80s. You know, the A League kicked off um, 2005. So you're talking, you know, what 20 years apart. What's what for you? For you, what are some of the biggest reasons you think why? The um the Irish league hasn't kicked off. You know, what I mean, it must be pumping in Ireland. Yeah. It must be chaos. And as you said, you know, the fans get down and they just want to watch football every week. But yeah, well, you know, you can't watch it from here. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a yeah, you know, well, there's no, your, no broadcast. There's nothing. What's that's what, the, well, that's it. You nailed it there. And one, that's the that's the first problem. It's uh, finances come from eyes on the game and and you know t- technology of having a TV deal, which the A League has had, and that's what's yeah. push the A-League to a different level. Okay, it's it's plateaued a little bit in the last two years and they're hoping now the new branding of A-League's new sponsorship is going to get, you know, the fans that they've lost over the years mm. back in the ground and, and COVID has had an impact as well. But yeah, the League of Ireland is a, is a funny one. I mean, historically, it, it was a very strong league. Uh, you know, um, we used to have teams in Europe every year. You're talking back in the 70s and there would be 30,000 people watching the game in, in but it's um we have this thing in Ireland called Gaelic football and, and hurling and, and historically there there are sports similar to AFL and rugby league here mm. and it was a law that if you played Gaelic games which is a, a hurling and football you weren't allowed to play soccer football you weren't allowed to be seen at a football soccer game it became like a mortal sin and, and, and Gaelic games and the church and, and if you know your history Irish history they kind of went hand in hand. So that that kind of, that impacted on, on Irish football, not having a TV deal, no, not having marketing, branding, finances, that impacts on it because there's, there's plenty of quality. The last yeah. championships we qualified for as a national team, 
uh, we had nine players that had played in the League of Ireland playing in the, at the Euros. So yep. there's plenty of quality that comes out of there. It's just, it just doesn't get the um, exposure that it needs. And mm. and uh, the A-League is very lucky, I suppose, similar to the, the old National League. Nas- National League, is, you would know better than me, was, a, was a, no doubt a great product. A lot of Socceroos came through, but yep. ultimately it was semi-professional. Mm. It was, but they probably had huge support. So you kind of have to get back to why they had huge support uh, and add that into now, nowadays with the way people stream their football, the way people just go to events overall. How do you how do you change it to get the best of the National League to the best of now? And is that going to be having a second division and yep. bringing your Marconis, your, your South Melbournes, your Melbourne Knights, all these historic big clubs, yep. get their fans back in and bring football back together? Because I think... There is a big divide in Australian football since the old National League and the A League start. That's a, yeah. That's probably a lot of fans been left at the wayside there because they feel, you know, this is my Greek club, my Macedonian club, my Croatian club. Yeah. We've been marginalised because you know we've been the door's been shut on us professional football wise. So we're going to keep going to watch Sydney Olympic and, and, and whoever my team is or you know Newcastle Olympic, you know whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of divide there that that needs to be. Mended, but um, uh, James Johnson uh, and Danny Towns, and I suppose, are the two big players in, in the game right now. And I think they're on the same page in that regard. So I hope we can all come together. There's there's plenty of good things happening, you know. If you don't believe, you know, everything you read. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I suppose that was the that was the big thing when the A League started in in '05 that they didn't want from the National League. They didn't want that that cultural influence they wanted it to be a bit more sterile for the average australian supporter to be able to feel a part of yeah but that in turn 15 20 years later that's hurt them that shot them in the foot that's it and that that only helps for me that only helps rugby league and afl because they've never had to they've never had to sterilize their supporter base you know what i'm saying it's Mm. the same people it's the same australians like you know you're saying or if croatians are of Greeks go to games, and you know there's going to be there's going to be trouble. Well, no, you you have security at the grounds, like every other sporting arena has. Yeah. You, you just you just have to do it a different way. There's, there should be nothing wrong with passion coming down from the sidelines or from the stands. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what the game is all about. You you know 100%. you talk about sport for me, you know I will talk about giving it a hundred percent, but also the, a lot of that energy comes from playing as a sporter, feeling. What's going on around you? You know, you you buy into the badge on the shirt, and yep. you buy into what you would want to see from a supporter. So I think, uh, yeah, it's very important, as you said, that they kind of get back to that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and, and I suppose that's that's yeah the biggest thing, you know, like it just the second division it needs to happen, um, <laughs> you know, sooner rather than later. Obviously, it needs to be perfect before you go in. You don't want to, you don't yeah. go in too early and then be a lot of mistakes with it or a lot of dramas but um it needs to happen you know we've had so many current and past players on and coaches and stuff like that and you and you talk about the second division you talk about the youth setup now with youth players coming through um and, and it being that too big a step you know the step is just they get to the a league from the mpl and then they come and train with blokes like yourself very experienced um, played in some good leagues and at some good, good clubs, and the step is just next level. It's just a holy crap, you know. This isn't just coming to train, kick a ball, and a bit of fitness. This is ridiculous. And then they fall backwards. You know, they don't cut it, so they leave. And then it's like they got to start the whole process again. It's where if we get that second division in, I think it's a step. Yeah, it's, it's an yeah. easier step. It's that mid ground. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think there, there's a bridge definitely that, that's needed there to, to, and then, as you said, solder that divide that there is because you're not playing, even if you're playing an elite A-League academy, you're not playing enough games in the first place. You're definitely not playing against enough men, which is kids' football. You could be a skillful, quality player in the academy, yeah. but it doesn't translate to being a very good player in the men's game, which is physically and mentally very demanding, you know, and you've got to be at that level every week. Even on even on your bad days, you've got to deliver a seven out of ten. That's that's 
part of being a professional footballer. And, and unfortunately, the young guys, they, you know, it's a, it's a, as you said, it's a big step yeah. and they can be burnt very quickly if they're not up to the level fitness quality wise. And, and as you said, maybe the second division could be a way for young players and, you know, um, to get to get a gig in, 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 in a, a, bridged, a bridged division, the, yep. a second division that then Newcastle Jets, for example, will, will benefit because oh, he's played 20 games last year in, in the division below. He's ready now. Physically, mentally, he knows what to expect. He's not going to get, you know, far by the wayside. He's, yep. We know what to expect from him. So, hopefully, as you said, yep. sooner rather than later, but they, uh, they, it's good. that's going to need funding, finance, and it's going to need a lot of energy put into it. Yeah, yeah, correct. Even, even for players, you know, going backwards, you know, like, um, I, I couldn't imagine how much a second division may have helped, um, you know, someone like Ben Ken, uh, Ben Kenorowski. You know, injuries. Yeah, when, he's, when he's coming back, yeah. You know, and he's just sort of sitting there in limbo. He's training with the boys, but he's not really getting the games under his belt where, you know, you put him on for 10 minutes. You can't afford to put him on for 10, 15 minutes raw in the A-League. But, you know, you put him into the second division and you go, right, play the last 10, 15 minutes or whatever it is, and he just slowly, slowly gets that little yeah. bit better. Well, that's what they do. Well, that's what every, I suppose, after, what is it, 2005, so... Nearly seventeen years now. You you would think they'd be there now would, that there yeah. is a, a proper reserve level as such that it's competitive and it gives you a chance to get up to speed, yeah. um, like every other top nation in the world. You know, um, it, it is it is much needed and, and you know, it has it has its merits and its qualities. But uh, it's all well and good us talking about it. Just needs to <laughs> it needs to come into fruition, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that, that's exactly right. You know, I couldn't imagine how frustrated you could have been um, just just in the off seasons at the A League, just how long yeah, they are. Like, being a long off season, like I get mm. Europe, um, European uh, off seasons. That people may say that it's too short, but the A League is definitely too long. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. for you. Yeah, for you. But, yeah. I suppose in Europe you play a lot more games in the season. So yeah. I mean. Mm. Again, this, as I said, touching on a point I made earlier, is probably why I had a lot of injuries in England in my, whatever, seven or eight years in England, yeah. that you're playing 50-odd games a year with cups. You're playing probably six, seven games a month on average. So, gets to the end of the season, you want to have your six weeks break. Yeah. But you're not losing a, a whole amount of fitness. So, that six-week pre-season yeah. block, playing a game every weekend, is probably enough to... That you're kind of just it's perfect. Whereas I feel with the A League, you play 26 games, then you're off for two months, yeah, and then you do a three month pre season. So that's five months really, because mm. no pre season game is ever getting you ready for what is yeah. a league game. You know that's that's the reality. So it's uh, I feel like it needs more games in the A League. It needs more teams, yep. and um, that's going to help up the overall product and the, the overall quality really for. Yep. Ultimately, you want a strong soccer rules that's competing on a world stage. No, no, that's exactly right. I actually had a question from um, one of the guys at work. Um, he's born and bred over in England and so forth, and obviously that's probably a good one talking about off seasons and stuff like that. He um, his question was, how many times did you spend at fat camp? Yeah, I spent a bit of time, believe it or not. I'm, I'm <laughs> a, a lean, skinny bloke, but I have my Irish genetics, which likes to hold a few potatoes around uh, the midsection. So. Yeah, so pre, I tend to be in that extra group, doing a bit of extra running, and it's the same at Newcastle. Yeah. I must say, uh, I think most uh, kind of sprinters, quick players, which I would be one, uh, tend to be a little bit more muscular but with, and powerful, but with that comes a bit more uh, weight around the arse and the belly, so it takes a bit more work in pre-season to get yourself riding. Yeah. I had the opposite as a sprinter. Yeah, There's and you love me. You're 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 lean, so you're not uh, you're not glute dominant like I would be. No, Josh will tell you of a game where I made a complete breakdown the line and got absolutely KO'd. <laughs> <laughs> I literally got knocked flat on my ass and could not continue the game. That's, that's a good day at the office, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a, a, oh, a, I was moving. Sport. Look, if he didn't if he didn't throw an arm out and collect me, there's no way he was going to catch me. There you go. That's a story to tell. That's a claim to fame, isn't it? It was in my final video. season before my calves decided they were going to give out. <laughs> you should have, video, should have videoed it, Ben, and sent it off to Taylor Regan. <laughs> oh, he'd have been proud of it. He'd have been proud. He, all, the, all I would have gotten from Taylor would have been, why didn't you run faster? He would have loved that, the assassin. Yeah, 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 the assassin loves it. 
No, that was that was the final season. The brain wanted to go the next season, but the body couldn't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, another question we've got through as well is uh, dieting wise. Um, are you pretty strict? Pretty strict on your diet, more so in the off season because that's obviously where you need to. You know, yeah, yeah, you have to be a bit it. more. You certainly have to be a bit more careful if you are if you do tend to to get a bit softer around the triceps and the midsection. So, yeah, look. Uh, I, I definitely keep training in the off season um, on my own, and I obviously the last few months I, I've been training on my own and keeping fit. But uh, you do have to be a little bit cuter what you eat and uh, a bit more, you know, quality in, in your in your salads rather than your your lots of bread and cakes. So um, yeah, I've 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 been a good pro. I ultimately I spent you know most of my career in in the kind of sports science realm. So. Not a big drinker. Uh, I tried to get to bed to get my rest and recuperation, mm. and uh, yeah, I think that that's why at thirty six, I'm 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 still going and still wanting to go because I've looked after myself ultimately. But um, yeah, I, I suppose retirement and old age and the body giving up comes to people at different stages. But I think uh, depending on how you look after yourself and and injuries, that's that's how you get the the maximum out of your body. So as again, touch wood. Yeah, I'm. I'm one of the fortunate ones. I still feel good enough and strong enough to keep going. Absolutely. And not too, not too fat just yet. <laughs> I was, I was about to say nothing wrong with the cheeky kill Kenny. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I said we're not going to go too much into that side of it. But yeah, as I said, hopefully, hopefully there's no news, no news on the media side yet. But fingers crossed, mate. You get get a gig somewhere. Um, I sure. Yeah. Did, did, I, did I hear that you went to Adelaide for a bit of a? Kick? No, 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 no. I think that, okay. that's that's a rumor. Maybe came from that side. I. I as I said, uh, it's it's definitely a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, I want to I want to continue playing. I still got plenty to offer. Yep. Uh, my goals record where I've been anywhere I've been is is good. It's good in the A League. I'm up well up there. So um, yep. yeah. I, I, look, I have no problem with when when it's time to give up and it's and it's all over. I have no problem to come into that. But yeah. physically, mentally, I, yep. I've got a desire there. I feel good, so I don't want to leave anything in the tank and I don't want to be spending the rest of my life yep. like a lot of players that give up and have that bitterness yep. that translates into you going to coaching and you pass that bitterness that you didn't do enough with your career or yep. you didn't I'm maximize wise. what you had you know so I'm uh, I'm in that place now where yeah I want to go out on my terms and uh, go out on a high and yep. as I said it, it is a work in progress it's, it's, it's not as easy as it was when I was 26 <laughs> to to not knock down the doors, but uh, hopefully my my goals record will will do me good. You know that's that's all I'm relying on at the moment. It's got it's got to help, mate. Barisha looks like he, well, Barisha's done and dusted, so he, hasn't, he ain't scoring any more. Oh, so, yeah. He's gone. Uh, he's gone overseas, isn't he? So yeah, he's he's going back to Kosovo. Yeah, I yeah. think he got sick of sick of waiting around, and um, yeah. yeah, maybe he got a bit frustrated with the A League as well. Oh, look, I look, I, I can see Fair his enough. point of view as well. It's it's getting younger. Uh, maybe he didn't enjoy last year at Western United. He didn't maybe feel he got the service that he would have liked. Like, I can see it from a lot of different points of view. But maybe for him finishing off back on home turf, that could be something that he always wanted to bookend his career with. So Absolutely. we don't know. But um, nah, exactly. yeah, good, good on him. He's, he, he, he was a great uh, A-League striker. So you know, all the best to him. Absolutely. It's a name as far as the A-League is. People who watch and know the A-League are concerned. It's, it's one they'll never forget. Yeah, it's synonymous with the A League. He he came in pretty early to the start yeah. as no name, and he, he he ultimately made his name in the A League. So it's kind of synonymous with the A League in that regard. Um, you know, he, he divided opinion, which is I think is a great thing. He um he annoyed opposition defenders, he annoyed opposition fans, but um you know he he his gift and his skill was not that he was a great dribbler, not that he was outstandingly quick, yeah. but his his desire to get in the box and the ability to be in the right position, whether that was three inches out, six yards out, he was in the right position to finish chances off. And that's an art form. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly right. From a striker's point of view, you, you know, you don't, you don't need to score 30, 30 yard screamers every day. Yeah. Anyone can do that. As, they don't, uh, they don't get you any, they don't, they don't get you anymore. For any striker will tell you it's about volume rather than quality. And, and yeah. ultimately, you know, as a strike, your game is simple. Link the play, hold it up, be a nuisance to the opposition defender, but underline, double underline, 
score goals and and uh, you know a lot of that. I've never scored a goal in my career without receiving a pass from somebody else. So ultimately, you're at the tail end of a move, so you're reliant on good yeah. players around you. Yeah, but just knowing the timing of a cross, where that ball is going to land, and being in the right spot, it's the hardest part in football. And as I said, he he was really good at it. Yeah. Uh, talk talk strikers. We can't go past the new sign from Perth, Daniel Sturridge. Yeah, fantastic. To yeah, the, uh, to the A League, um, you'd have to be probably the one of the biggest names in the A League, p- purely just because of his age. He's right in that sort of prime. You know, I'm sure he doesn't want to end his career here. He wants to go you know, dominate the league and obviously go back to England or you know in, in yeah. Europe somewhere. He's openly stated that. But um, for the A League and you know pl- pl- all the other all the other players in it, it's got to be um. It's got to be massive to have. It's fantastic. I, I think it's brilliant. Like fair play to Perth Glory, they've went yeah. above and beyond there. Uh, I suppose for Daniel Sturridge, he, he needed this as well. I mean, he's had a a, a pretty horrendous eighteen month period, obviously with the gambling stuff and uh, yeah. you know not being playing football. So it's good for him yeah. and it's good for the A League. So it works brilliantly in tandem, works. you know. But uh, he's coming, as you said, he's coming in the grade A. The A League maybe. Seven, eight, nine years ago, you can come in in your mid thirties, oh, yeah. um, and kind of almost retire here and and comfortable. You don't have to work too hard or whatever, and mm-hmm. just be a marquee. The league is it's too fit now. I mean the the level of fitness in the A League. So your mm-hmm. marquee players that come in need to be at a at a certain level, fitness wise and quality wise. And Daniel Sturridge ticks all the boxes. I I think he'll score. A bucket load of goals there. I think he's got good players around him. For Neroni, he's a clever player. Uh, Brandon O'Neill coming in there is a very good player that can play forward passes. They got pace out wide, so I, I don't see why he'll have any problem scoring goals there. And to add to that, which is very important as well, and people forget about it, is he's a personality. Yep. He, I saw him on the project the other night. He's able to talk. He's 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 got a bit of like about likability factor, and he can help sell the product. I don't think. I'm looking around the A-League and, you know, there's not many players, you know, um, mar- not even marquee names, but just personalities that can talk in front of the camera and can sell the brand of the A-League. And he's going to be great. I think people are going to ask him questions and he's going to have a funny answer. He's going to have a clear answer. And, uh, yep. you know, we need people like that. We need people that have, you know, a different edge and not just the, the technical qualities of football. Yeah. And that's 100%. It's something that me and Josh have always discussed when we look at post-game and, and, and even half-time interviews that Fox have done over the years and stuff. It's almost as like a lot of A-League players do not get any media training. Mm. I, I, and, I it, don't, and it shows. Yeah, I, look, I, I'm sure they've all had the one-on-one and they've all had, you know, been, but I think there's a, there's a little bit of you're not allowed to say too much because you're, mm. under, you're under the company umbrella as such. Uh, yeah. There's a little bit of nervousness of what to say there, and a lot of people just want to get on with the get on job, with the playing the game. They have no interest in that side of it. Yeah, yeah. But um, but ultimately, ultimately, it comes down to as you said, people just being comfortable and relaxed in that environment. And uh, yeah, I think it's very important. I think Channel Ten, Paramount now have a big job as well in that regard in, in growing the brand and getting you know. People, to, I watched the. I'm not a big rugby league fan. I watched the NRL Grand Final. Yep. There was a lot of hype and razzmatazz around it. You know, ex players speaking to the guys on the pitch yep. half time before the game, after the game. There's a bit of, you know, to and fro in there, a bit of crack, a bit of serious conversation. The A League needs that, not just your 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 stock standard, difficult game today. You're you're playing a tough side. What do you reckon? Yeah, I hope to win today. You know, nobody yeah. cares. They want give, yeah. give me something, give me a bit of personality. You know? Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. No, no I t- totally agree. Hundred percent, totally yeah. agree. Um, but yeah, now Perth, they're doing the right things at the moment. They're um, they've they've bought well, and they'll be hard to beat again this year. Um, especially considering you know. Yeah, our track record against Perth ain't ain't crash hot. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, um. Yeah. We'll go over there. This makes it a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. That's it. It's just um, yeah, don't know. Just not our, not our um, not our place to be, unfortunately, against Perth. But, um, it's a tough, it's a tough trip, that's for sure. Well, that's exactly mm. right. Yeah, it's a hard trip. You know, you look at New Zealand having to travel that far and everything else, and it's um, yeah, it's it's not it's not a trip you want to be doing all the time. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, if you guys have any questions to whack in the chat. 
um, as I said, probably finish up in about 10 so minutes. There's a few more that we want to get through. But if you guys have anything else, um, whack them in now. Uh, just so, or, or re-whack them in if you'd already whacked something in and we've missed them. And um, I'll get Bender to sort of keep his eye on them. If he sees a decent one, he'll rip it out of there for us. But um, I think the one for me that I'd like to get your opinion on, you know, as an Irish kid, I'm sure the aim is to get to England. You know, like that's where you want to be. It's where you want to play. It's the best, one of the best leagues in the world. Um, but it's it's a big step. You know, you go in there, and then as you said, you know, you you got there, and then it was like, holy shit, this is a big step. Come back home, start again. Um, would you, you know, for young for young Irish boys and that, would you be like Australia, maybe a, a better opportunity, so, or someone like Australia, maybe Asia. Yeah. Um, what, what's what's that like? Do you feel as a as a junior um, trying to make your your name for yourself? I suppose. Yeah, look, I, I've spoke on this topic before. Um, certainly, I think I would recommend Australia highly to anybody. But I, I think the way recruitment is done here, it would be difficult for an Irish player to come straight from League of Ireland to here because you know it's this it's not a, a huge brand there wouldn't be a, a, a big name coming in the door and then you're going to have you know CEOs and directors who aren't necessarily football experts here being sold by agents and you know you got your people on Facebook and um, Twitter or whatever that are not going to be too keen to see you know an O'Reilly or an O'Donovan coming through if they don't know who who the person is they get more excited about a name that finishes with a vowel, you know, some guy that's playing in in Italy or Spain or Greece, it just sounds more continental, oh, he must be good, oh, he's got a Brazilian name, he must be good, you know, so for Irish players, there's so much technical quality that comes out of Ireland and you add into that the, you know, not the stereotype, but Irish, it's, it's you know, we're tougher regarding, you know, competitive nature, That's that's our, kind of calling card you know get stuck in use everything that god gave you and um you know we've you know we even as an international team over the years we've ne maybe not necessarily been the best team yeah but we've definitely been one of the most competitive teams you know so i would certainly talk you're talking about going to play in a place like holland and france and and mm. you know um spain and, and belgium if they could definitely but um asia i feel like with asia it's one of those you can't get to Asia from a place like Ireland because your brand isn't big enough just yet. I think yeah. to go to these places and, and your China and, and these places with bags of money, you kind of have to have a certain bit of a CV behind you, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, daily, I would recommend to anyone. But as I said, it's just, it's a different it's a different yeah. marketplace that daily clubs are shopping in. That's what that's the point I'm making. Ultimately. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it doesn't help, obviously, as we discussed earlier. You know, in regards to the Irish. You know, not having the media and, you know. Yeah. It, it, well, they, uh, get, they, they get plenty of media. I mean, in the newspapers, there's a, like, there's a, the games are historically Friday, Saturday. There's a pullout, a 12 page pullout in the, in the national newspaper uh, every week. Hmm. You get your uh, highlight show, but it's late night for an hour on a Monday. Uh, you get a few games on the, like, maybe, I don't know, 10 games a year on National Broadcaster and a few of the European games. Yep. But, uh, it's not. It hasn't got a flagship channel like the A League has had yeah, historically. Yeah. Fox Sports has been outstanding for the A League, and and Channel Ten Viacom now have a, a chance to to build on that. And it, ultimately, as boring as it is, finances are is is yeah. you know key to success in any sport and organization. Yeah, well, that's exact exactly right, mate. Absolutely, Ben. Is there a few questions in there? Obviously, we do have a few questions. So we've got mobile gaming coming in uh, with what made he uh, what made him make the decision to come back from Brisbane? Yeah, look, uh, I went to Brisbane, and I suppose I've been a senior player there with the vice captain and I scored a few goals. But uh, ultimately, I, I wasn't enjoying my football. I suppose. Uh, I'm an instinctive player. Um, I like to to express myself on, you know, press defenders and and uh, just be in the box, you know, when when the ball is there. But I find I just found the style of play for me uh, at that moment in time was a bit more, you know, um, possession game. Yep. Never risk the ball, and and you know you're making a lot of forward runs. And for me, that's not where I'm at my best. Um, and yeah, just it just yep. then I had a phone call from. 
Laurie McKenna, who's still a good friend, over the, that Christmas period, I'd been dropped for a game or two. And he said, would I be interested in coming back if, you know, things weren't right? And I said, yeah, if you can do it, speak to the powers that be at, at Brisbane. And yeah, that's that's pretty much how it happened. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I didn't, ultimately, I didn't want to leave Newcastle in the first place. But I was gonna say. As, people, as people know now, that was a lot to do with the financial position that the football club was in. So mm. uh, I didn't have much choice in that. Yeah, well, that's pretty much it. I, I was going to say yeah, that was that was pretty well documented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's pretty yeah. much, straight something straightforward. Where I believe at the time it was, you know, you wanted a two-year deal, and they were only going to offer you one, and something along yeah, yeah, those lines. Yeah. And you know, as I said, it's it, it's water under the bridge now. It, you went, you come back. Um, luckily for us, and um, yeah, as you you done it right there at Brisbane. You you know, yeah. Look, yeah. I, I must I must say I must say look. It, I scored about seven goals in my first ten games. So what people say, oh, what yeah. happened at Brisbane? But you know, it was, it was just probably ultimately it was a new, it was a new kind of uh, challenge there for for them. They had new manager, seventeen new players, uh, a new style of football, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think there was a bit of a kind of a teething period in the middle there. It wasn't kind of great, and mm-hmm. I've been dropped before. That's that's no big deal. That wasn't ultimately why I came back. It just yeah. Probably didn't feel like the optimal environment for me, if that makes any sense. And yep. ultimately, I want to win games, I want to score goals, but I came to Australia because I want to get the balance of life enjoyment, football enjoyment, and that probably just wasn't right there at the time. Yeah, oh, that's fair enough. Yeah. Any more there, Ben? Uh, uh, if, hey, Roy, if this one comes from EGOXR6, and that is, hey, Roy, if you don't get another. A league contract? Would you consider playing NPL in Newcastle? If so, who would you play for? I know I've had plenty of phone calls from, from Joe Griffiths <laughs> and Michael Bridges and all in. to come up to come out and train with them. Yeah, definitely, and, and a few in Sydney as well. But uh, oh, look, I'm, I'm patient. I'll, I'll I'll bide my time. It's still early days. The A league doesn't start till end of November. Yep. I'm keep I'm keeping fit, so that's fully where my focus is right now. Uh, not being a politician there inviting you're answering the question but uh yeah i haven't i haven't talked too much about it uh, if your head's still head's still you know at the top of your game it's the last thing you want to be thinking about i suppose that's it that's it i mean i've spent my my whole career being a professional footballer and i feel there's still a year or two goodness left in me and i don't want to leave anything behind like i said earlier yeah well, it's yeah and both, and both us myself and josh personally think that you that you're still at that level as well 100 percent. well, oh, well yeah look i mean that's the thing i had a few, i've had uh, a few offers overseas uh, mm-hmm. and being COVID and my, my wife is due a baby in yeah. uh, early December it just uh, yeah. it wouldn't be right yeah. so I'm digging my heels in for the A-League that would be yeah. you know perfect for me but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens football's a, a funny old game now at the end of the day there's offers there's offers there so I suppose that, that, that's the biggest thing you know if you're getting offers from somewhere mm-hmm. else it's ah, yeah they, they've got to come it's got to come yeah, it, that, something if, will come. If they're that yeah, keen, awesome. yeah. Not too All right, Noopy, Noopy's got one, oh, yeah. and I'll answer it for you, Roy. And that's, can you rule out not returning to the coast? No, if he's offered a contract, he should take it. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, look, that. I mean, I mean, that's uh, obviously that's again similar to Newcastle. I think new coach there, Monty, Monty's gone in there as the the head coach, and he'll be wanting to to show what a good U team he had there. Yeah. Uh, financially, he'll have his constraints as well, similar to Newcastle. So, uh, again, uh, do they want to bring back uh, a, a striker that they've had previously that's a little bit older with no sell on value? That's a different, maybe, that's a different, um, qu- it's a question probably for them to answer. But I think, I think just the way they're going, they're going younger, they're going cheaper, and they want players to get in the first team, give them a chance to play, and they want to sell them on. But, uh, yeah. I suppose I'd put my flag in the ground now in Newcastle, so maybe I wouldn't be looked on too con- fine, uh, or, yeah, too kindly down there, I should say. Oh, mate, friggin' Lauren Lor- uh, Lor- 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 on the coast, It mate. would be very much a Mark Berrigini situation, as far as I'm concerned, or a Ben Kennedy situation. Yeah, ben yeah, Kennedy, yeah. If, you've yeah. Got, if you've got the offer to continue on, and that's the offer that you've gotten from the A-League, I yeah. personally wouldn't hold any malice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I know. It's, yeah, I suppose it's one, of the, it's one of these things. It's... I'm a professional player, and if that was a possibility, it's something I'd have to look at. Yeah. But um, you know, as I said, you know, 
when I left a couple of years ago, and you, you get the snake banner, I suppose. Yeah, their, their support, their support has turned the corner, and I suppose <laughs> as a club and as a you know a marketing tool. Uh, is it something that they, they want to do? That's the that's the big thing. But, um, you got, you got but for me, for me, look, I suppose oh, oh, I wanted to know who's got that tifo. Do you have it or does Laurie have it? <laughs> I know, yeah, it's a good one. No, it's a good one. Who was a good one? <laughs> to, be, to be fair, it, looking back now, that spurred that spurred me on to great things that day. That was my it day did. for Newcastle Jets and to score a hat trick within hat-trick. within a half an hour and yep. put a marker down. That was um, it was a great. It was a great day, um, and it really set us off on on a fantastic season. And I suppose, I suppose, I've been synonymous with Newcastle ever since then. And and you know that's that's the reality. Even when I went to Brisbane, people probably looked at me at Brisbane. And it was a strange thing to see me in an orange shirt when yeah. I'd become yeah, it was. All the same, Mr. Newcastle. So it's uh, there's still a little bit of that. There's still a bit of that lingering, and Newcastle will always be a part of me as well. And you know, uh, you know, they, there's been offers to to be part of the club in different capacities after I finished playing football and stuff like that. So yeah. that's uh, you know, that's maybe something down the line. Absolutely. Well, um, yeah, we're going to wrap up with a few, obviously, just real quick, short questions and that, mate. We again, we do thank you for jumping on, giving us a bit of your time. Um, no so obviously, a couple of quick ones. Three, three of your most memorable moments in the A League. Well, I just spoke about one, my yep. hat trick against the. Um, um, Mariners, sorry, my first game for Newcastle was a great debut. Um, I suppose my 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 first game in the A League, I scored my debut against Perth. Yep. That was a great day. You know, after such a a long pre season, my first pre season in Australia, the grand final was was one of the greatest days and one of the worst days for me because yep. uh, it was a great day because, as I said, ultimately we got to the grand final after being. You know, when I signed, why are you going to the, the wooden spooners? And we proved everyone wrong that year. But, uh, yeah, it was a bad ending for me. I, you know, trying to win a game, I went, mm. I got too into it, never pulled out. And ultimately, I lost 10 games. And you see NRL players getting done for cocaine and missing one game. I feel a little bit hard done by that. Yeah, trying yeah. to do something on a football We all did club. as well. You know, yeah. so I, it, and it, actually, it actually cost us the next season as well. Because, yeah, you know, when I came back and I scored goals, we... We were too far behind the eight ball to catch up to six, but um, mm. but yeah, no. So I've look, I've been lucky. There've been some great moments. I scored on my debut for all my teams that I've played for in Australia. Um, but you know, I've I've been blessed. I mean, scoring my fiftieth last year mm. uh, against uh, Wellington, that was a, a good moment on Wollongong early in the season. So mm. yeah, so you know, some good moments. Some good moments. Scoring against Mariners, second last game of the season when we've had a poor season and we need the points. To avoid a wooden spoon, yeah. that was an important one as well for different reasons. So, yep, you missed it. Missed it. Yeah, exactly, there's just there's too much to mention. And um, as I said, I, I'm I'm blessed that to be one of the, the all time top scorers in the A League to yep. to have played for Mariners, Jets, and Brisbane Roar. And I just hope it's not over just yet. Absolutely, mate. Um, best goal, best goal in the A League. What's what's best that goal? Been? I scored a goal this season, my first year here against Adelaide for Mariners. Uh, Left foot volley from outside the box, which is rare for me. Most of my goals are inside the box. Yeah. Um, that was that was probably my best goal on the eye. Mm. Um, but I've scored some. I've scored some pretty good goals. Some. I think my goals uh, for the Jets carried more weight than um, looking brilliant. Just yep. because a lot of the times at the Jets, every point mattered. Every every win, every point, it, it seemed to be a big deal, you know, and. Uh, under Ernie, second year after going to the grand final year before under the, the second year, I felt like he was going to blow his top at some stage. We were under so much pressure in that in that second season. You know, people were talking about second season syndrome, and Ernie was banging his head against a brick wall, thinking like, you know, he's got this great team on paper, and we we just we just weren't delivering every week. You know, because we were very inconsistent that year. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, Ernie was a great guy to play for, and. It was, uh, as I said, those were good times. They're the times I remember, definitely the first couple of years at Jets. Yeah, yeah it's um, it's interesting one, obviously, with Ernie. He, he, he vanished. He, he's just vanished into thin air. One of the best coaches to come, you know, obviously in the A-League. And, um, yeah, no, he's a great coach, great guy. He's great yeah. guy as well. I mean, I mean, yeah. If you've ever met him, he's a yeah, he's really guy. nice person. You know, he's, he's, he's had some very successful teams, Victory, Jets. He's been... 
great, and he's 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 a good a good guy all round. And uh, I just think he was sick of it in the end when he lost his job at the Jets. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. I think financially they they never. I was I was one of the players they didn't replace, but ultimately they wasn't a strong enough team on the pitch. Yeah. He lost his job, and Carl came in and, and signed some good players and gave us a fresh impetus. But um, I think Ernie went missing on purpose. You know, I think yeah. if he wanted to be seen, he'd be seen. And he's an older an older man, and him and his wife Kerry went and travelled around Australia. And yep. I'm sure he's he's fine and happy in his in his own way back down in Melbourne. Absolutely. I was about to say you bumped into him not long ago, didn't you, Josh? After he lost, after he left the Jets. Yeah, yeah, it was down. Bumped into him down the shops or something. Yeah, I was wearing my Jets shirt down the down the local, and he was they they sort of I don't know, they got a house or they had friends or wherever, um, not not far from where we are, and yeah, he was just walking in the shopping center or whatever. He seen me, I had no idea. He spotted the Jets shirt and just obviously went, "That's that's bizarre," and um, sort of went, yeah. "How are you, mate?" And just I just looked over and oh shit. <laughs> yeah, he's he's big, he's big Ernie, and yeah, he come over, he had a um, he had a chat, and yeah, he, he was great, you know, he's very friendly, and um, there you go, yeah, just sums it sums him up there, down to work, nice guy, yeah, just there, yeah. and uh, as a as a coach as well, I thought uh, any any coach I've worked under that's a little bit more experienced, I always find they have that skill of being a good man manager and getting the best out of you, and Ernie was the best at that of knowing how to speak to different people. Yep. To get the best out of them, it wasn't this big. I am the coach. I've done my coaching badges. Yeah. I'm going to come in at 37 years old and I'm going to reinvent the wheel. And I know mm. this is how football can be played. He came in. He put his style of football across to us. He got the best out of each individual, and he played a very attractive, attacking style of football that mm. not only do you want to watch but you want to play in. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the good ones, definitely. Yeah, I think it's probably one of the biggest. You know, <laughs> things we've been lucky with um, in regards to some of the coaches we've had in, but I suppose you can't go past Laurie McKinnon, you know, someone like that to come into a club and, you know, I suppose you could go to any 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 friend of yours sort of thing in our retrospect and go, do you know the CEO of your club or, you know, what's the CEO's name of your club? And they they couldn't tell you. You know, yeah. so, you know they just yeah. sit back in their, in their office and that's pretty much them and they're happy to do so and, is where you get lucky with someone like Laurie at the helm who yeah. just and again another another great character Laurie yeah Mag- magic as well you know him coming up from the central coast being yeah. the mayor of Gosford yeah. and all that and he, he comes up here and he gets people on side and he's a good great people person yeah uh, you know I, I suppose it was great that he got the, the Chinese to buy the club to invest all that money at the start and we saw success yeah. and it was part of that success uh, but unfortunately when the money came it was it was uh, it was got a very strained position for Laurie because mm. you know he was trying to do a job with his hands tied behind his back. But uh, yeah. a great, again, again, another great character, great yeah. fun, and uh, you know well liked by everybody. Same, same as Arnie around town. So that's yeah. there's no higher praise in Newcastle than that. People thinking you're a good bloke, you know. No, that's exactly right. I don't think he'll he'll come in in Newcastle and have to worry about buying a beer or anything like that when you yeah. yeah. when you dip into your own pocket to freaking save a club. It's um. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You, you exactly. Don't get, you don't get any better than that, you know. That's just yeah, unbelievable. And um, yeah, he he kept a very low profile when that sort of started to happen. You could sort of tell that mm. it was just I've saved the club. Oh, yeah, like it, it, I'm supposed when when anybody when you put your own money into it, not not only you putting your your heart and soul into something, yeah. you know, you put your own money and you put your your, your family at risk like that. Correct. Mm. Um, you know, he he shows you how committed he was and. And I hope I hope the football club does right by him because uh, he deserves that. At least he deserves to to keep you know a great club alive like that. Absolutely. Uh, there's a couple of quick ones, and we'll let you go, mate. Did you expect to be approached to do the commercials, to do TV commercials? To Aztec Solar ads. As as Aztec yeah. Solar ads. The Aztec. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It, I, I didn't expect it, but it actually worked out well. It was. I just come back from Brisbane and. They were doing an ad and they, they wanted somebody you know that was known around town and I suppose it was good it was good for me uh, as well uh, and I enjoy I enjoyed it I enjoyed that side of things anyway they're great guys there and uh, yeah I think their uh, their profitability since I've done the ad has gone sky high so yeah, I should be I should be getting more money than I got so <laughs> few solar panels on the roof and <laughs> um, uh, Mary's just put in here look forward to you and Ellen. 
naming your naming your daughter after me. Ha ha ha. It's a nice it's a nice name. Very Mary. saintly. Mary. Yeah, that's it. Uh Elliot's just joined us. Hey guys, just joining in. Hey Roy, loved having you here in New in Newcastle. Um very sad to see you go. Good luck with the future. Well, Thank he hasn't you. left Thank yet. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm still living here. I bought a yeah, house here. Yeah. I put my I put some roots down here, but uh yeah, obviously it's uh, frustrating for me as well not to be, but I'll be supporting in the spirit. I'm sure I'll be, I'll be there in some capacity at, at the games this year doing something or other. So um, yeah, I'm sure I'll bump into you. Absolutely, mate. Well, um, yeah. Other than that, we're gonna we're gonna let you go. We do, as I said, mate. We we thank you for your time. Um, from from us, we hope obviously the career hasn't ended. Um, we're hoping you get a gig somewhere. Um, as I said, I'm sure you'll. Tinker around, I'm sure, as you said, Bridgie and Joel and friggin' Boogs and whoever else is yeah. freaking going to join the MPL these days. Um, we're banging on, banging on your door if not, nothing else sort of comes to it. But um, as we said, mate, Ben and I have always said that we figure you've still got plenty of, plenty of go in you, mate, and um, there's still plenty of goals to come in the A-League. So hopefully you get to pick up a gig anywhere. And, um, yeah, if it's down here in Melbourne, mate, we'll, um, we'll be sure to come down and support you, even if you're not playing the Jets, mate, because, yeah, true legend, eh? Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure on the show, and uh, keep up the good work. Take care. Absolutely, mate. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, guys. See ya. Big shout out to Roy, mate. Um, he, yeah, absolute legend of the club, um, our, our club, obviously, and the A League. Still kicking goals, still doing the right thing. Um, and yeah, he's hoping he gets a few more goals in him before the season ends. Oh, sorry, sorry, his career ends. Um, but yeah, other than that, Ben's friggin' disappeared, but that's all right because we're gonna. Slowly wrap it up anyway. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, there's a big... Been trying to get get him on now for a while. He's an absolute legend. I know a few fans at the Jets, you know, weren't overly impressed with the way he went about himself, obviously, on the on the field and scoring goals and, you know, he's, he's passed it and this and that and shit like that. But um, stats don't lie, as far as I'm concerned. Stats don't lie. He looked brilliant. One one in two, as Ben said, um, which you know, not not many, not many strikers in the A League can say that. Uh, go and ask Mario Jardel and um, and Co. How many goals, how many one in twos they've had in their career and stuff like that in in leagues and so forth. I'm pretty sure a lot of them probably won't be able to tell you that. Uh, what do we got, Matty? We broke it. <laughs> we, we were, I'm I'm glad that we didn't talk about his uh his Sunderland debut. Yeah. <laughs> Two old draw with Birmingham City in the Premier League. Yes, yes, yes. Um, right, Woods, he didn't score, so we're fine. Timmy Woods, welcome. Welcome, Timmy. Uh, Roy broke it, absolutely. Anyone who doesn't like Roy as a player doesn't know football. Yeah, well... Agreed. Uh, agreed, agreed, as I said. And there um, were plenty of Jet supporters that were ready to throw him away at the wayside. Yep, yep. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me, and I said it and I was open, open about it on, on the show... Um, when you've got a striker like Roy, who, let's be honest, isn't expensive um, in comparison to your Daniel Sturridge's and, uh, um, you know, your younger strikers. Uh, and he's Australian now. And he's Australian, so he costs nothing for being international and so forth. Um, he doesn't you know, take and, up a spot. And you're banging in one and two. Um, it makes it pretty obvious for me that you, you put him into the into a club. Even if, even if he's sort of coming on for the last half an hour of a game or whatever, You'd rather him be doing that, um, bringing his experience into obviously all the younger kids and stuff like that coming through. Um, I couldn't imagine how much of an influence he would have been to, um, you know, your Lucases and, and um, Goodwins and stuff like that uh, coming through. So yeah, at the end of the day, mate. We, at the end of the day, we wish him the wish him the best. Um, you know, as we said, yeah, if the if the coast come, not somebody will pick him up. If the they'd be mad come, not. Yeah, they'd nah, be mad not to. Hundred percent. Um, for me, I thought I thought Adelaide would have been prime for him to go to at the moment. I think they're screaming for a, a good number nine. They've had so much drama um, finding. Just no, like, they brought back um, Georgie Blackwood. Yeah, well, they brought back Blackwood, but yeah, can you imagine him and Roy up front doing some damage? Jesus Christ! Craig Goodwin freaking firing the balls in from Wayward as well. Happy days. Um, who's going to teach our lads now? He's, yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Uh, both he and his wife are Aussies. Yep. Yep. Uh, be a waste for a club not to sign him. Yeah. 
in the A League. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, of, I think so. I think somebody will. There's plenty of clubs out there still that could um, that could snap him up. Um, Perth won't be one of those clubs. They're freaking. Hashtag much... smash the cap. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much done. Did Wellington uh, is strapped for players? Yeah, but they won't. Yeah, not unless he wants to move. No, we won't have to move. Freaking Wellington have already come out and stated that they're going to freaking play their season here, most likely. Oh, have they? Um, yes. Uh, at this point, um, if they get to go home, they will. Yeah. Um, like for, for for majority of it, like their their home base will be here. Because I know the Wellington, uh, Wellington. I know the New Zealand Rugby League side have set up camp at uh, the, the Dolphin Stadium um, for next season, and I know there was talk of obviously putting them all in together. Um, women's side coming in now as well, so it's going to be a bigger squad, and I'm sure they don't want to be travelling every second week and that with the W League and all that sort of stuff. So. You'd be surprised if they don't set up a base camp somewhere over here. And then, as I said, if the, if they get the chance to sort of go over there, they'll probably take three or four games over there in in a row. Um, I don't think any 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 fan of, you know, any, any football fan will, you know, have a whinge about them doing that. They spent most if of you're doing that, If you're doing that, Timmy Woods, you need to sign just about every other player that's left at the Jets before you can start it. Ha, ha, ha. Unless the Sydney Wanderers career mode might happen again. You've got to sign more Jets players for that to happen. Absolutely. Um, Considering we took all of them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Wellington's an interesting one. You know, they, they could definitely afford him. Obviously, they've had a few blokes leave and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, it may, maybe another option for him to go back to Brisbane as well. Um, you know, they, they, they haven't got an absolute banging front, front line-up. No, but they've got a new manager who's doing something very different. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like they've got a good, they've got a, they've got a good new manager now and so forth. And he spent a bit of time there, so it, it may work out that he might be able to go back. Um, you know, I don't see him going to Western Sydney. I don't see him going to Sydney. Um, you know, again, I think he's correct with Central Coast. I think they're in their own little nutshell and they're doing their own thing. You know, it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see any club. He, I, he, I don't think he's going to be that player to come on. He's going to play an out, you know, ninety minutes of football. No, you know what I mean. I think I think that's sort of done. I think that you know what I mean. But he's definitely the type of bloke that you want in a club to push the youngsters, the guys that are playing ninety minutes. He's going to push every every little bit to make sure that he's doing whatever he can to, um, you know, to be pushing for that for that starting spot. And if he doesn't, as I said, he scored a hat trick in half an hour. It's all he needs. Come on in the second yeah. half. Um, you know, score a banger, score the winner, stuff like that, and everything can change. Obviously, you can go from play, playing 15, 20 minutes and a couple of goals in that period, and you start in games. So, um, I did a career mode with Maitland FC. Happy days, happy days. The Maggies, <laughs> the Maggies, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, um, what was I gonna say? Friggin', yeah, thank you guys, thank you guys for joining in as always. Be sure to go share it around once. Thank it's... you for submitting your questions. Yes, that's the other one. So thank you for submitting the questions. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed to the YouTube side, you haven't liked the Facebook page, um, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, I believe. Um, yeah, so yeah, jump on those sort of socials. I think it's socials. Yeah, I thought it was socials, I believe. Anyway, we'll find out in a minute. It'll either happen or it won't. Um <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, uh, Spotify, be sure to obviously jump on any of those, subscribe and like and do all those sort of things. Make sure you guys share the content. That's the biggest one for us. Just share the content. We're, as I said, we're not in it for subscribers or anything like that. We just want to get um, you know, the, the football content out to all the other football fans. That's pretty much what it is for us. You know, We're not trying to be bigger and better than anyone in, in Australia in regards to doing podcasts and shit like that. We just... Want to come in, sit down, talk a bit of football as we do, and yeah, that's pretty much us. Um, set your alarms. Set your alarms. 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, Australia continue on their merry way, um, I believe, for um, their World Cup campaign. Currently undefeated, so doing doing good things, and um, yeah, may it continue tomorrow. And then I believe it's on Tuesday. Um, Tuesday, I think it is, yeah. So... Uh, well, what other news have we got before we wrap it up? Um, the best passer in the A League's birthday today. It, yes, 
I did read that. Where did I read that? I think I was in my news feed, actually. I figured I must have put something on Facebook or whatever it was last year about freaking something. Good old Bobby like Burns. Yeah, yeah. Um, what have we got? I need you all to get the new Xbox. Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, so yeah, no, we're good. Have Paramount to watch it. You don't need Paramount to watch it mobile gaming. You need the 10 Play app. So there you go. Free, live, all Australian games. <clears throat> Pardon me. All Australian games will be on Channel 10. Yeah. Right? End all international story. games. All of, regardless, like, f- free to air Channel 10, whether they flick it on bold or fucking whatever it may be. Uh, but that's it'll be on Channel 10. You know, I mean, it's you're not going to have to worry about that with the with um, Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus um, is going to really kick in when obviously the A League kicks in. That's the biggest yeah. thing. Um, but everything else, you should be pretty much getting for free without having to pay for Paramount Plus, whether it be FFA Cups, uh, women women's internationals, and all that sort of stuff. That should all be pretty much free at the moment. Uh, so, so are we, Timmy. That's why we play it on PC. Yeah, yours is literally read my morning. Uh, okay, I download it on my phone then tonight. Yeah, just download it on yeah. your phone, smart TV. Yeah, you've got it there. Um, and if you've got a Chromecast, just Chromecast, yeah, Chromecast it across. That's it. Whack it on your phone, then Chromecast it. Jimmy, PC. What sort of controller do you think we use? Yeah. So like, Josh sports, uses a PlayStation One though. I, I think. I yeah, I do. I I couldn't I couldn't tell you the last time I picked up an Xbox controller. I I, I prefer it for some things. Yeah, no. Nah. Like, if I'm playing FIFA on PC, I'll use this. If I'm playing <laughs> COD on PC, I'll use a PlayStation 4 controller. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm weird like that. Uh, thoughts on the women's sponsor announcement? Yeah. Um, you know, it's good to see that... Shouldn't be a big deal that the women, that the men and the women have the exact same sponsor. That's well, how it should be. Well, Ben, yeah, ben, and, um, ben was saying this on Monday night, I believe it was, in regards to... When we were doing the kit stuff that, you know, some of the A-League clubs have even got two different sponsors for a home and away. should be pretty much straightforward. If you're supporting the men um, for their home shirts and stuff like that, I don't see why you shouldn't be supporting the women and the youth and whatever uh, in regards well, to... Well, one that. of the only leagues that I know of, yeah. there, there are a few, hmm. but 95% of the leagues around the world, if you sponsor the home kit, you sponsor the away and the third kit. That's, That's how the sponsorship deal works. That's right. Why are we so different? Yeah. Why are we trying to diversify that? Mm. We shouldn't be diversifying that. We should be making it one, and you have 12 chances with 12 different clubs to get it on there. Yep. No. That sparks a bidding war. 100%. A bidding war means more money coming in on the sponsorship. Yeah. Make um, companies fight for it. Don't. Don't sit there and please both companies by going, you can have this one and you can have that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, new goalkeeper signing today, uh, Boric. For the women, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll keep, obviously, clear on the toes. Um, you know, young international, you know, youth, youth interna- Australian international. So, obviously, she's got the goods. Um, and, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think that's about three. Don't quote me on it, but it's around three. Uh, new new players into the into the squad. Uh, I'd probably mm-hmm. like to see a few more than that, but it's it's a start. It's probably three more. It's three more new players than what we got last year, to be honest. So if you take it, and hopefully they come on and obviously give us a bit of impact. Yeah, we had a lot on loan that then got loaned out in the finals period to other clubs. Yeah, yeah. and one medal for playing three games. C- correct. Correct. Uh, I was going to say, good to see the media is still slowly pumping through decently, a lot better than what it was. I think that was another thing I was interested to see what would happen in once Nate left. You know, he done a massive job for us, uh, changing everything up at, at the Jets page and so forth. But it's slowly, slowly, slowly continuing with Quinton at the helm, which is good. Um, yep. You know, it just, just sort of just dried up and it was just a pain in the ass before that. So it's good to see that. Another sponsor could have gave them more money for the women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really. Yeah, in in, in the Premier League or something like that, maybe not in the A League. Not in mate, the A League, mate, mate. Where Aussies? Yes, Mary. Where Aussies? We we're, we're a bunch of tight asses. The Je- put it this way, Timmy. The Jets have struggled to get a kit sponsor for the home kit for the past like four years. Yeah, yeah. Mate. So it's a big deal for us. Mate. 
the sponsors over here ain't going to pay a cent more than they have to. Put it that yeah, way. Yeah, but at the same point as well, Newcastle has been stuck in a loop of they've always wanted somebody local. Yeah. And there isn't a lot, considering what they're asking, there isn't a lot that fulfill that criteria. True. Very, very true. Very true. The main um, one would be Port of Newcastle, which is what we've got. Mm, mm. But yes, Nate has gone, Mary. Yes, yes. He left a couple of weeks back. Yep. Yep. Uh, what are we... Do we have anything else to discuss? We are the A Leagues. A League men. We are stoked to welcome Azuzu. Azuzu Utes! That was the other one. Sorry? Azuzu Utes. Um, oh, Azuzu! Yeah. Izuzu Ute Australia. Do you do the Izuzu Ute Australian A League? Do you do Izuzu? Um, <laughs> A leagues, A leagues, Izuzu. Um, all happening. Uh, good weird. To see, good to see uh, something different. Uh, it's so weird, obviously, it not being Hyundai. You know. Yeah. He, he, even Hyundai A leagues, you know, would have just. Been perfect. Worked. Now it's Izuzu. <laughs> it's Izuzu Leagues. It's not Izuzu. It's Izuzu Ute. Izuzu. No, oh, jeez. I think it's Izuzu Ute. Izuzu Ute A Leagues. Yeah. It, I, I don't know how they've worked it, but it's weird. Yeah, Izuzu Ute Australia as our name right. Does anyone right? know who our international striker we're supposed to be signing is? We're not signing an international striker. Correct. We are signing a... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me rephrase that. We are supposed to be signing an international midfielder. Correct. And supposed on the be. proviso <laughs> on the proviso that there is some wiggle room to play with after that, mm. it would be an Australian-based striker. Correct, correct. The words from Arthur Pappas. Yep. Um, what else was there? The Brazilian international is in quarantine here in Australia. Zero English. Um, no, he did. He, no, he, he did said, have a little bit. Oh yeah, he said thank you, and that's about it. He'll pick it up. He'll pick it up. Yeah, it's English is easy to learn. Stub your toe. Wait I think he wait. understands it. Oh yeah, he would. That's the biggest thing. Though. Being yeah, a footballer, he'd understand right? it. He just wouldn't be able to speak it. Could you imagine the like yeah. well enough? Yeah, yeah. being a footballer. Actually, actually, you want to talk about Brazilians and languages and stuff like that? I watched bloody friggin' Leon play um, the other night in the women's friggin' UA uh, Champions League, and bloody yeah. Carpenter and her French. Whew, talk about yeah. fluent in French. Holy shit! The interpreter's just sitting there next to her, just going, "I don't need to be here." Yeah, it's freezing cold. I'm sitting here holding a fucking umbrella. <laughs> Just in case she's got no idea, and she's back and forth with the bloody French presenter like it was bloody like she was born there. Unbelievable! Hey, hint, hint. Guess what? What? Studied it in her um, HSC. Yeah, I'm sure she did. I know she did. Oh, there you go. There you go. Good times. Um, it's it's obviously helped her. <laughs> it's the same was... reason I I can un I can not necessarily speak but can understand Italian. Yeah, it's all good to me. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? Tess got on for about 15 minutes thereabouts in her Champions League. Lost to Juventus. Um, Fucking good on her, though. Blown out of the water. Blown out of the water, they were. Uh, so that they were yeah. They were just, yeah, yeah different class. Different class, uh, Juventus. They looked really good. Um, have found, you, you can watch the Women's Champions League on YouTube. I found that. Uh, found yep. a link and stuff like that. Nice and easy. Just type it pretty much in Women's Champions League and it brings all the shit up. Um, yeah, a couple of good matches and stuff like that. Watched Leon, obviously, and I watched uh, Tess go around as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. Other than that, I think that's we've got Tommy Sam, Semi. He's listed on Jets' website, but he's not signed. But he's on there for some reason. Yeah, I people... wouldn't look too much into that. I went to the Jets' website player profiles three weeks ago, and it still had the player profiles from like two and a half years ago. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be going too much into it either. It's sort of yeah. Um, I wouldn't dig too far. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be digging too far into it and stuff like that. It's not a hundred. And again, speculation. 
yeah, it, it's not it's not a hundred percent yet. Let's get let's get that out of the way before we go anywhere. It's um, yeah. Objection, speculation, overruled. Overruled. Um, yeah. Anything else, guys? Anything else before we wrap it up? Anything else quickly before we wrap it up? Um, well, this little bit here won't be obviously live um, on Spotify. No, I was, like oh. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it because it's actually been decent discussion. Yeah, well, yeah, well, actually, surprisingly, it's hasn't been. It hasn't been waffle, so yeah. Well, it's on there. Yeah. <laughs> so who's the new media guys? Uh, Quinton. 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 Quinton is the new media manager at the Jets. He. I uh, spent a bit of time at the Knights. He's spent a bit of time with Northern New South Wales football. Uh, Newcastle born and bred, so he's Newcastle lad. So, um, yeah, he's, do, he's been doing good things. Uh, he's helped us out a bit. Obviously, getting a few of the guys on the podcast. So, we obviously thank him and the club for that. Um, hopefully, a few more in the coming weeks, which would be great. Damn waffles. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. I did hear some good news in regards to Western Sydney Wanderers. Uh, big talk in regards to Carl's future on that one, where his time could be up sooner rather than later, depending on results this season. Uh, quite ironic, considering that he went there for bigger and better things and has done fuck all. Um... <laughs> He's not wrong. No, no, that's pretty See, much ladies it. and gentlemen, we only deal with fact on this podcast. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. <laughs> Pretty much it. I don't need to go into any more about that. That's all that. Um, you know, it is what it is. I uh, feel sorry for um, Kenny. Uh, just getting tagged around like a little goat, and it's not his fault. He's got a he's got a beat to the drum, I suppose, and he'll have to pay the consequences. Unfortunately, if the results don't work out. So, um, yeah, interesting. Could be a, could be a trip back to Vancouver real soon. Uh, what have you been stolen more of our players in the off season? Yeah, he hasn't stolen anything on that, you know. Yeah, meh. Their own fault for not locking them down. 100%. Absolutely correct. You know, like, it's going to be good, you know. It's to be, be fair. Yeah. We gave them more than enough chances to A, be able to lock them down. And, and for some of those players that he took, I'm surprised some of them didn't leave a lot earlier. Correct. Yeah. People like Steven Yugarkovich. Well, that wasn't Boyd. That wasn't Boyd. Not trying. <laughs> He tried. Yeah. No, I'm talking pride of Western Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, da, 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 da. Agreement. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something, and I just totally forgot what the hell it was. It must so, have been important. No, nah, it must factual. have been important. Oh, I'll just keep telling you every, every week. So, still 60, I think it's 60, 60, 70% off um, at Fever. Uh, uh, Pellet, sorry. Uh, Pellet. What told Pellet. me 60? It told me 60. It, Is it said sixty or seventy. It told me sixty. It was like because I went on there yesterday and I was like, "Oh, what else? What else can I buy?" I bought nearly everything else. Um, what, what else can I steal from here? Yeah, you're as bad as me. Uh, I bought the coach's shorts yesterday. Like Thirty bucks, twenty. Oh bucks. yeah, I see, like, I looked at them and just went, "Yeah." Oh, the only reason I bought them was because they're handy. Just... Apparently, it's only thirty off. No, 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 no. Yeah. Click on something. Yeah, click on something, and whack it in your cart, and then it tells you sixty percent. Um, I think I've bought everything that I've that I need. <laughs> I just bought the shorts because they're purely because they got zips. That's just fantastic. Yeah, I see. I would have grabbed them if I had like actual blue shorts, like the player shorts. Who's I would your have pick? Who's your pick for the team to watch out of the season? You, you can't go past Perth. You can't go past Perth. You can't go past Perth. They've bought everyone. Look between again them and City. Um, you know, City City's front th- front three is solid. Uh, you've pretty much got the whole Australian front three um, somewhat. So th- they will be hard to beat. They haven't got the absolute best back line. So th- they will be somewhat weak there. Oh, I can't get a training jersey now. They're all gone. They've only got junior sizes. Yeah, I, I got one of the That's blue ones. annoying. I got one of the blue ones. Yeah, the training jersey. That's the one I wanted. Oh, really? I only got juniors left. Oh. Yeah, they got polos though. Yeah, 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 I got a polo yesterday, like thirty-five bucks or something. I'll have to get a polo. Um, what was I gonna say? But yeah, yeah, per- Perth, Perth's gonna be the team to beat. They're, they've, you know, again though, it's it's on paper. I think, I think Sydney is gonna struggle this year. I think they're gonna drop a few spots. I think, um, they'll, they'll have a good season. Sydney's, you know, sixty percent up and about thereabouts. Um, <sighs> Brisbane. Uh, no, Mary, it is not. 
still in Newey and open. No, it's gone. Nope, gone. No, they can only do it online. Newcastle grabbed all their shirts that they needed to and stuff like that, and then that was it. Kicked it out. Uh, da, 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 what I was going to say, yes, the first going to be the benchmark. Uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, I'll tell you what, Melbourne could go close, I reckon, to a double wooden spoon. I don't think, I don't think they've, they've done that well. They've brought in a couple of good players. You can't go past Popper's coaching style and stuff like that, but... Popper has brought in a lot of Popper players. They haven't impressed me. You know, the players that have Popper come... has brought in all his, of his Popper players. Yeah. Your Economides, your Speranovic, your Jason Davidsons. Yeah. Mm. The only one he's sort of gone out on a limb for, which you could still count as a Popper player because he signed him at Xanthi, is just Josh Brilliante. The only one he hasn't brought back from... Or the only player, Australian player, that hasn't been brought back from Xanthi that originally moved over there for Popper is Paul Izzo. Yeah, poor bastard. <laughs> Paul Brick is still in goal. Yeah, yeah. Did and you, you know what? Could do a job here for a lot of teams. Oh, yeah. yeah I bet yeah. you he would be sorely missed at Adelaide right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Western United's defence won't be too bad. Um, they're, they're pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty tough. Only because of Popper. Topper. <laughs> Not Popper. <laughs> I said stop. I said Topper. Oh, I thought you said Popper. Um, no, I said Topper. Uh, what else was I going to say? Coast are still spoon this year. Yeah, I'd love to see it as well, but you know, I, I don't. I don't think, think the Coast will spoon it. No, I don't think so. I, I think it's going to be one. I think it's going to be a team that you just don't expect. I think it's going to be Wellington. Eh. Well, well. Wellington need to find some players. That that is for sure. They need to start looking at some new players. Um, not 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 their fault, I suppose. They had a couple sort of just up and piss off. So, is it going to be a retail shop for Viva Jets merch? We don't know. No, I, I doubt it. I think it's more at the games. It's what it's what the Jets have usually done for the last couple of years, and I think it works well. You're at the game. You buy. Stuff it's easier there. for them to be hands off with it. Yeah, that's it. They don't. Yeah, everything just literally as they they just shut the roller door. Shut the roller door at the merch when you go up the stairs there inside the gate. They push the freaking shit back behind the door, and then that's it. It just stays there. Mm. They don't have to compete. For with people them. like us, it does make getting things difficult. Yeah, it's especially it. if they're one, especially if they're one-off kits. Yeah, he's gonna have the right connections. Um, I we just get them direct from South Australia. I, I swear, he said Popper too. Yeah, thanks, Matty. Um, I didn't. I know what I said. But anyway, we're waffling. Yeah, now we're waffling. Not, now we're I want to keep this in the. I want to keep this in the pod. Absolutely, absolutely. Now we are waffling. Um. So yeah. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. We'll save whatever else we've got for next week. Uh. Currently at this week, it will be just Ben and myself. Uh. No special guest at this point. We will try our best to do so. Uh. If not, we will run it as is. We'll talk obviously the uh, game tomorrow morning for Australia. Um. I'm pretty sure the Matildas are playing at some point as well. No idea exactly what date and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll suss out the week's worth of football and A-League and stuff like that with what's been happening and what's been going on with the signing news and stuff like that. But yeah, other than that, we thank everyone for jumping on the show tonight. It has been a muchly appreciated. We, uh, we thank Roy for his time, obviously, and wish him uh, all the best in trying to secure a new deal. And... Uh, the birth, obviously, of his daughter uh, at the end of the year. Uh, it'll make two. So he's young, he's young bloke and now a daughter as well. So happy days. And, yeah, other than that, we'll catch you guys next time. Be sure, as I said, to go and subscribe and like pages and do all that sort of stuff. Uh, if, you guys are on, if you guys are on the Twitch side, hang around. We are going to freaking go over and raid, I'd say, probably Vimesy. I don't think anyone else is on tonight that I know of. Um, or or overly care about <coughs> William Wanker. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll like somebody up. that re- responds to people when we raid them over. Yeah, uh, that was that was that was his first. Yeah, oh, we will will definitely not. He's a twat. Yeah, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. What are we doing? He's playing Mafia Three. Playing Mafia Three. So yeah, jump on the Twitch side. We'll give you thirty seconds. Um, just to sort of twitch up, switch up, twitch over. Just Twitch over. Yeah, Twitch over. We'll just, go, that, that's our term now. That's it. We'll give you, we'll give you it 30 on. seconds to Twitch over. Mate, sign that. Patent it. If I haven't heard it, I haven't heard anyone say it. That's it. We'll trademark it and we're, copyright it and all sorts. It. And they go, oh. They are good. <laughs> how, how, just for you, noobs. Hang on. Hang on. And just like that, he's good. Cool.
There it is, just like that. And one, another one for you, Noops. As always, we, we hate, hate Coast Scum. scum. He's gone. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah, a couple of seconds or so. Uh, give you a bit of time just to switch over on the Twitch side. But for everyone else watching, uh, whether it be on Spotify, um, Anchor, re-watching it on YouTube and uh, Twitch and stuff like, who watching it live on Twitch and stuff like that, we thank you guys for jumping on uh, week in week out, listening to our stuff. Uh, it's muchly appreciated, and yeah, at the end of the day, without you guys jumping in, there's no point of us doing it, um, because it's what we do on a weekly basis anyway, just on the phone, spending hours of, hours at a time talking shit about football and the wives kicking our asses because it's all we do, so uh, it gives us a bit of a platform to talk about it without them absolutely cracking the shits and whatever, get to lock ourselves away for an hour or so and dribble on, but other than that, we are going to switch over now, yeah, um, so thanks to everyone who has jumped onto the Twitch side. Uh, hang around. Just say g'day. Pop in, say hello, and then you can tuff off. So take it easy, guys. Until next time, we will catch you later. And as always, we, we hate Coast Scum. Take it easy, guys. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.